is good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video today i have your wrestlemania 35 full show review and results for you guys i will be going through the entire card and letting you guys know exactly what happened at wrestlemania 35 you guys know how these videos usually work i'm going to run down the entire card starting with the pre-show any big segments that happen on the show take you through the main card and we're going to go all the way through until we reach the main event we're going to cover the good stuff the bad stuff the feuds themselves where i think they're going to go from here what my personal thoughts were on every single match and everything in between. It was a pretty long show, so let's buckle up, get ready, and let's start things off with the pre-show. So we started things off with the Cruiserweight Championship match between Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese. And coming into this thing, guys, I wasn't really that excited. You know, I thought Cedric Alexander, my boy, was going to be in here instead of Tony Nese. However, I was kind of happy with the fact that Tony Nese is in here. You know, he, he is a hard worker. He's good in the ring and everything. I just, I don't know. He just doesn't have the character to me. I don't, I don't know what it is. But anyways, these guys had a solid matchup it was a solid opener. I feel like the crowd wasn't awake or something for this match because I thought the back and forth was solid. It wasn't, you know, an amazing, just over-the-top incredible matchup like you would expect or, or you know, the Cruiserweights would expect to deliver here, but it wasn't a boring match. It wasn't a bad match by any means necessary, and Buddy Murphy was rocking the sickest Joker gear. He That's his best attire he's worn by far. I love the lime green and the purple. It pops so nicely with the white contrast boy. He was looking fresh. He's definitely got the attire of the night. Thus far because obviously it was the first matchup so he had the best attire thus far but it was a solid matchup Tony Nese does defeat Buddy Murphy bringing Buddy Murphy's long title reign to an end and that surprised me I did not expect that at all but Tony Nese is your new cruiserweight champion and hopefully this means that Buddy Murphy will get promoted to the main roster like Mustafa Ali did and we can see him you know mix it up on Raw or Smackdown I think that would be good for him but Tony Nese does win and is your new cruiserweight champion next up guys we had the women's version of the WWE Battle Royal no memorial or anything in this but it is the women's version of our two different Battle Royals here on the kickoff show Asuka Ember Moon returning here did I, I just hate that she had to return here. She's been out since January, possibly before that, and you want to return her here in the Battle Royal, man? I don't know if I agree with that. This matchup was probably just, it was just terrible, guy. I mean, it was a botch fest. Women just laying in the corner doing nothing, just just missing the cues, and the timing was all bad. It was super botchy, and just the, the eliminations looked very weak. It just wasn't a good look, man. Ember Moon gets eliminated by Lana. She's been out with injury. One of the crowd favorites, they booed when she got eliminated, which they should, and then you have, you know, Asuka gets eliminated by Sonya Deville and Sarah Logan, or Sarah Logan eliminates Asuka, and just when you think it's over, Carmella sneaks in and eliminates everybody. Uh, Sarah Logan was the only one left. See, Carmella fell anyway. But uh, Carmella just sneaks in there and gets the, the win, and she's the winner. Get out of here, Nikki Cross. You were eliminated early. Carmella's the last one standing, and she's your women's battle. I mean, I know they, they booked her to win because they wanted it to be, you know, unpredictable, I guess. I mean, Jesus, man, but you're going to waste Asuka again. You can't even throw her a bone after she dropped her title to Charlotte. She did what she, you, you asked. She dropped her title. You know, she doesn't have a championship match here. She lost to Charlotte last year, and you can't even give her a win here at the freaking Battle Royal, man. I just didn't like this matchup. It wasn't good. The finish was crap. The the whole thing was crap, and it, it just, it wasn't good stuff, man. Carmella is your winner of the WWE Women's Battle Royal. Next up, guys, we had the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Revival, taking on the major brothers and fellow figure collectors, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder, and to be honest with you guys, this match was pretty stale for most of the way. You know, they picked it up near the last, like, five minutes of the matchup. They started doing some things. The story of the matchup was basically the hot tag to Kurt Hawkins. It wasn't the best match. I, I found myself kind of bored throughout it, um, but uh, yeah, they, the, the end of it came. I've actually booked this on Vindication where Kurt Hawkins plays dead. This is how the end of the matchup went. He plays dead. He's playing possum. He acts like he's knocked out, you know, unconscious. Uh, Scott Dawson, I think, goes over, you know, trying to wake him up. He slaps him in the face. And then the quick possum schoolboy or roll up, whatever you want to call it. And one, two, three. And the losing streak is over for Kurt Hawkins. He finally snaps the 269 day losing streak or 269 match losing streak. And he finally wins. And him and Zack Ryder are your new Raw Tag Team Championships or Raw Tag Team Champions I should say and I guess the Revival should head off to AEW or something because uh, they just they have been treated like crap pretty much since day one getting called up from the main roster uh, or from NXT so Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins are your new Raw Tag Team Champions and it was uh, it wasn't the greatest match ever man but uh, I guess we can see where we go from here I mean it's cool to see them to see some new talent with the belts it's cool to see Zack Ryder get a title it's cool to see Kurt Hawkins finally win and everything but I feel bad for the Revival, and 
and uh, yeah, that was pretty much it for your Raw Tag Team Championship match. So two new champions crowned thus far on the pre-show. And the last matchup on the kickoff show for WrestleMania 35, guys, was the men's side of the Battle Royals, and it was the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And you guys know the history of this, this Battle Royal. It's pretty much meaningless. I mean, nobody really does anything beyond this. Once you win, you do nothing. I mean, it literally leads nowhere. There's no title opportunities. They could improve this match so much. If you put an IC title or US title stipulation in it, you know, like the winner is an automatic number one contender or, or something like that. But no, they, they go with the basic stuff. You guys know we have the SNL, the Michael, I don't even remember the name, Colin Jost and Michael Chi or something like that. They, the, the Saturday Night Live guys were feuding with Braun Strowman coming into this thing, right? So what I'm thinking and you had all the men in the ring, right? Even the, the SNL guys, Colin and Michael, were in the ring. Braun Strowman's the last one to enter this matchup. When the bell rings, why wouldn't Braun Strowman, after all they've been through, after the shenanigans and the fighting and telling them that they were going to get their butts whooped at Mania and I'm, you're going to get these hands and all this, how come when the bell rang, why wouldn't Braun Strowman pick out those two? Even if they did, they did. When the match started, they rolled up under the, the bottom rope and hid under the ring. We all knew that would happen, but why not just, like, why wouldn't wouldn't he pick them out? Like, if he wanted to hurt them so bad and do all these things, why not, when the match started, go after them, go get them? Like, I don't, I don't know. I just think that's sort of, a, that makes the audience look stupid in that point. Um, this matchup was good. I like that the last remaining few guys were good talents. Like, the last, I think, seven were like Apollo Crews, the Hardy Boys, Braun Strowman, uh, Cian Almas, Mustafa Ali, Luke Harper. Luke Harper returned for this thing. He's not featured here, but he was on the, on the show there. Uh, really scary bump at one point. Luke Harper had Mustafa Ali up in a suplex on the apron. Braun Strowman gives a big boot to Luke Harper, and he falls off the apron, suplexing Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali took a nasty fall, guys. Like, even after the matchup, he was still getting checked on. I think he may be legitimately hurt, and I hope that it's just something minor and not something serious because he seriously landed on the back of his neck and shoulder area, and then he hit his face on the announce table. I did notice that. So hopefully Mustafa Ali is okay. Um, I, I, definitely a scary-looking fall. It did not look good at all. Jeff Hardy had fresh face paint. Matt Hardy was looking good. Uh, Braun Strowman looks amazing, man. He looks cut. He's slimmed down a little bit. He's he's went on a mini cut here, and he looks fantastic. Uh, he was throwing guys all over the ring. This this battle royal was much better than the women's. Just ha just freaking miles ahead of the women's, and it actually had some structure to it. The last three were the Hardy Boys and Strowman, not including Michael and Colin. They the the Hardy Boys had Braun Strowman in a suplex, trying to get him over Chris Benoit style from the 04 Rumble. You know, trying to suplex Braun Strowman over the top rope. Michael and Colin roll in, try to eliminate him from behind. That didn't work. He eliminates the Hardys, and then he, one by one, eliminates the SNL guys. How creative is this? We all knew this would be the ending. I don't even know why we had a full battle royal when we knew this would be the outcome. And uh, I'm just glad Braun Strowman finally won. I picked him to win, and that's a win, so I guess that's cool. But uh, nothing battle royal, but Andre, Andre. Braun Strowman does win the battle royal for the first time, and I'm finally glad to see him, I guess, win it, even though it won't lead anywhere. But uh, they could have done this a lot better as far as taking some of these talents and putting them in other matches which we'll get into later on in the show. But that does it for your WrestleMania 35 kickoff show. So our main show kicks off with the host, Alexa Bliss. She comes out, does the opening segment. You know how they do on WrestleMania 35. She comes out and she says that she can make a mania moment with a snap of her fingers. She snaps her fingers and out comes Hulk Hogan, brother. And he's cutting his promo. And you know, he's doing his usual stick and he, he does it. He literally said his exact WrestleMania 30 promo that he did. You know, he did the Silver Dome thing again, making a joke. I thought it was pretty funny and everything. Pretty cool to see him here. You know, I don't really care for this, but it was kind of cool just to see the opening here. But out of nowhere, Paul Heyman comes running down to the ring. Just comes out of nowhere. No music, no nothing. Terry's music's going off. Paul Heyman walks down to the ring and he says, you know what? If, if Brock Lesnar's not on last, we want to freaking wrestle right now, right? So out comes the Beast Incarnate, and we are live, guys. We are going to run this match up. We are going to have Seth Rollins take on Brock Lesnar right now. Out comes the King or the Kingslayer. Yeah, he is the Kingslayer, right? So he comes out. He has a sick promo package to start off his music. He's looking good. He comes out in the black and gold WrestleMania 31 gear looking. You know, his 2015 gear. He looked great. Um, I liked it a lot. There will be a custom of that coming soon. But we're going to run our Universal Championship to open WrestleMania 35. It wasn't really much of a match, you know. 
know, they did the same old shtick. Brock Lesnar comes out, beats on Rollins. F5 on the outside, throws him over the announce table multiple times, puts him through one of the uh, announce table covers. Like, Seth Rollins' back was all whelped up and cut up and bloody. He looked, it looked brutal, man. His back was all messed up. Seth Rollins with a comeback, shoves Brock into the ref. Low blows Brock Lesnar like we saw on Monday Night Raw. Hits him with three curb stumps and a super kick while he was down. And that is it, man. The, the, beast, the beast is slain. And we have a brand new Universal Champion. My Seth Rollins. My boy Seth Rollins has done it. What a happy night here at WrestleMania. Live from New York, baby. We freaking did it, man. I did not expect this. I didn't expect him to open the show. I didn't expect my boy to win the Universal title. But here he is. He slayed the beast. Can I, I just hope maybe we're going to get a heel Seth Rollins. You know, he low blowed Brock, right? So maybe he just snapped. Maybe this, you know, he's going to be super over now because he defeated the Beast, you know? But why not make this into a heel set since he low blowed him and, you know, he kind of did Brock dirty. Maybe this is what we're going to get. A heel Seth Rollins with the Universal title, man. I'm all for it. I love heel Seth Rollins. I like either either version of Seth is great, but a heel Rollins is great. And this, this was fantastic, man. Good stuff. Not, you know, not much of a match, to be honest with you, but a great moment here to slay the beast. And we got Seth Rollins just, just killing it at Mania. Good stuff all around, man. I'm just so happy that uh, the Universal Champion is going to be on Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. What a beautiful look, man. Seth Rollins, Universal Champion. That just has a great ring to it. Next up, guys, we have my boy Randy Orton taking on AJ Styles. And this is one of the matchups that I was the most looking forward to. And that we were knocking out the two matches that I probably was the most excited for outside of the Demon Finn Balor, my boy, returning there. So I was super excited that they, they kicked off these two matches. You know, AJ Styles rocking the sick AF black, gold, and white. I loved Randy Orton's attire with the lime green and black. I didn't, I wasn't a fan of the RKOs on the knee pads. That's just some of that, I don't know. I just don't like locos stuck everywhere if they just look out of place on the knee pad there. But I like this matchup. I enjoyed it. I felt that, I don't know, like if something was missing. I felt like, I felt like we needed another five to eight minutes for this thing. I would have liked Randy Orton to kick out of that phenomenal forearm. I think that if he kicks out of that phenomenal forearm, maybe they go a little bit more and then he gets another phenomenal forearm. It would have worked a lot better. And I was really hoping for like a 450 RKO or something, an AJ kick out. I don't know. I just felt like the match was missing something, but I was um, happy with this matchup. You know, it was solid. It wasn't as good as I thought it could have been, but maybe we'll get another matchup at the next pay-per-view or something, and they'll give us a little bit more from this matchup. There wasn't anything to continue the storyline, per se, but uh, I think that Randy Orton really needs to get a win back over AJ Styles, so uh, this match was fun, and AJ Styles does win, and both of their gears were sick. Next up, we had the Fatal 4-Way SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between the champion Usos, taking on Ricochet and Aleister Black taking on The Bar, taking on Shinsuke, Nakamura, and Rusev. Now, to be honest with you guys, if I was fantasy booking this, if it were my, if I were Vince McMahon and I was putting together my WrestleMania card, I would have taken Ricochet and Aleister Black. They would have never been a tag team, by the way. I would have taken The Bar, put them in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Rusev and Shinsuke Nakamura would have been in a different matchup, and I would have had the Usos go one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two, -two, whatever you want to say, in a tag team match with the Hardy Boys. I think that would have been a much better match here, but this match match was enjoyable. I thought that all the teams looked good. All the teams got in their stuff. We had some cool stuff. Um, not as high flying as I expected, but we did have some cool spots here and there. I think the outcome was perfect here. Having the Usos retain was the perfect choice. I'm so glad that Aleister Black and Ricochet did not win. I hope this is pointing towards them separating on the main roster and going into singles action. I think that would be much better here. Shinsuke and Rusev should do the same thing. And I just say, overall, great little thing here. I think it was a solid matchup. I love when guys are running in and out of the ring, just black mask, Kinshasa, bro kick, super kick. You know, I, I love when the transitions are like that. That was beautifully done. They did that on SmackDown Live this week as well. And I don't know, man. Good match overall. Usos retain. Just good start to the show, man. We're three for three thus far. Usos retain their SmackDown Live tag titles. Next up, guys, we have the Falls Count Anywhere match between The Miz and Shane McMahon, the former best friends, the former McMiz right here. We all knew going in that this matchup was going to be all over the place, you know, all over the arena you know, some hard-hitting stuff, and we always knew, the whole time we knew that Shane McMahon was going to end up jumping off of something or doing some high spot, and that's the exact thing that we got, guys. At the
the end of the matchup, we had, uh, you know, they just brawled pretty much. This is just a brawl type of matchup. Miz's dad got involved, got mushed and beat up in the corner. Uh, Miz and Shane spill into the crowd. They're bouncing over. At one point in the matchup, Miz, uh, they get into the announce area. You know, like all the foreign announce teams, like the 20 different announce teams that they have up there in the middle of the crowd. They went to that area. They, they He put him through a table. He hit him with a monitor. And then he hit him. There was like a levels deal where, where the announce table was. There was like a barricade and then like it fell about eight or nine feet and Shane McMahon got hit with a monitor by The Miz, and Shane McMahon flipped over this barricade, hit his back on the top of a golf cart, and then fell another seven, six to seven feet to the concrete, and it looked brutal, man. That was an awesome spot. I love that. They battled some more. They climbed up on some scaffolding, and it led to the end of the matchup where Shane McMahon would be suplexed off some scaffolding into one of those table-like structures at the bottom, you know, that they used in the past for superstars to land on to break their fall, and and Shane McMahon would end up being on top of the Miz from the superplex that Miz delivered to Shane McMahon. And Lil Nate, the referee, counted one, two, three, and that was it. Shane McMahon defeats the Miz. I did not see this coming, but I guess it does, you know, sort of continue the storyline. It, 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 you know, it plays off the fact that Miz um, it wasn't really defeated. He was more just left in a precarious situation after. Uh, you know, get it, letting his emotions get the best of him there in that matchup and suplexing Shane off that scaffolding. This match was pretty solid. I enjoyed it for what it was. We all knew it would be a brawl, and I think it delivered in that aspect. You know, I wasn't really excited for the feud. Like, I'm not a big, you know, fan of the feud per se, but it's been pretty cool to see, you know, how they've developed their characters, how they've kind of switched roles, and this matchup was fun to watch. I mean, I had some good fun with it, and it was, it was what it was, man, but Shane McMahon does defeat the Miz after Miz was immobile after the Super Perplex. Well, both men were immobile. Next up, we had the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way Match between the champions, the Boss and Hug Connection. Hate that name to death. I call them Bailey and Sasha Banks. Taking on Natalia and Beth Phoenix, or Divas of Doom, or whatever they're supposed to be called, versus the, the, the mild Samoans in Nia Jax and Tamina, who I hate so much. And then they were also taking on the Iconics in Peyton Royce and Billy Kay. Now, this matchup was just, uh, I don't know. I mean, it was it necessarily it wasn't horrible but it wasn't that memorable it wasn't that great I mean we had a few cool spots I guess I like the glam slam off the top row from Beth Phoenix to finish the matchup and the Iconics Peyton Royce would come in throw Beth Phoenix out of the way and they would steal the victory and the Iconics win the women's tag titles I was afraid of this I knew this would happen uh, this is what I predicted in my predictions. I just felt that they were going to give it to him, and they did, and I don't agree with it. I think that Sasha and Bayley should have held on to those championships because they deserve it. I mean, there's no other legitimate tag teams right now in the WWE for the women besides them, so I think that this would have been much better for them to retain and find new opponents, but they gave it to the Iconics, and I don't know really what to expect now, and I know they're going to cut some horrifically annoying, cringy promo on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown Live Whichever one, it's not going to be fun. They're going to be yelling and mocking and just screaming. It's going to be terrible. I'm already predicting it and calling it now. But Sasha and Bayley do lose their tag team championships in a non-memorable matchup. Uh, again, just uh, see it at best. Next up, guys, we had the WWE Championship match between the new Daniel Bryan. Hate that term. It's it's just Daniel Bryan, you know, man. It's just, it's just Daniel Bryan. With his partner, Eric Rowan, or Rowan by his side, taking on Kofi Mania, baby! With his New Day brothers, Big E and Xavier Woods, Woods in his corner. On the pre-show, Big E cut a very fantastic promo. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was a fantastic promo uh, leading up to this matchup, but, you know, these guys did some great back and forth. You know, the crowd was behind Kofi the whole time. I felt that the ending of this matchup, however, was a little bit anticlimactic. I felt like they should have put us on the edge of our seats a little bit more. Like, at Elimination Chamber, I felt like we were on our the edge of our seats a little bit more. Um, I was happy with the result, and uh, Kofi Kingston, ladies and gentlemen, is your new WWE Champion. And I got some symbolism right here. So we take this hemp championship and we put it in the proverbial trash can. Bam, there we go. So we got that. And after the matchup, Big E and Xavier Woods would surprise their brother Kofi Kingston with the WWE Championship that had Kofi's side plates on it. Very sick moment. Um, like I said, I felt like the ending just came out of nowhere, man. Like uh, Daniel Bryan 
was down. You know, they were stomping each other out. They were on the ground, ground and pound. And Kofi just waited for Daniel to get up and then hit him with a trouble in paradise for the win. I thought that they would do a little back and forth, like a little sequence, like, oh, uh, the, the running knee, oh, the trouble in paradise, oh, the SOS, and like back and forth, off the ropes, da -da 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 -da, and then bam, trouble in paradise, one, two, three. But no, that is not what we got. But I don't care. You know, I'm, I'm happy with this result. Um, going in, I, I could have, I would have been fine with Daniel Bryan retaining, and I would have been fine with Kofi being crowned WWE champion. I'm glad this happened. I'm excited to see it for Kofi. I've always loved Kofi and been a fan of Kofi, so this is cool to see. And I'm glad to have witnessed it on the, you know, to see that and, and see everything. And congratulations to Kofi. Epic. Can't wait to see where we go from here. I honestly don't see a long title reign for this man. I don't see, you know, them keeping it on him, but for now, it's a great moment. His kids got in the ring. It was cool to see New Day with him and everything, and I think it was awesome, man. Really good stuff, and I can't wait to see where they go on Monday night, or SmackDown Live, I should say, and it should be good, man. I'm excited for it. Congratulations to Kofi, and we got Kofi Mania in the house. Next up, guys, we have the United States Championship match between my boy Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio. I was looking forward to this matchup, but of course, Rey Mysterio got injured on Monday Night Raw with Trash Corbin. Bocce Trash Corbin, man, I tell you. But anyways, he suffered an ankle injury, and I think that is the reason that this matchup did not take place, or that it took place, but it wasn't very long at all. Rey Mysterio uh, hurt his ankle, and this matchup was over in like two or three minutes. Minutes. And I'll probably talk about it longer than the matchup was in or at WrestleMania 35. Uh, pretty much they went really quick pace. A few reversals here. Joe gets hit with a 619. Ray goes up to the top rope, jumps off the top rope. Samoa Joe reverses it into a Coquina clutch, and that is it. Samoa Joe retains. The only thing that I can say that's positive about this is that Samoa Joe has been, you know, both of these guys actually have been buried the last few weeks, just losing random matches. Samoa Joe's the U.S. champion. He literally lost three or four times in a row going into this matchup. So, one thing I can say is that this makes him look stronger. You know, it, 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 beating a Hall of Famer in Rey Mysterio at WrestleMania like this in like a minute is pretty good for his, you know, his resume and giving him some momentum as U.S. Champion. So that is the one good thing that came out of this, but it does suck that these men weren't able to go. I would love to see them go, you know, rounds. Maybe they can make up for it on SmackDown Live. This matchup probably had its time cut due to all the other matches. I'm sure, you know, when you have that many matches and you start running low on time, even though you're live on the WWE Network, you can go as long as you want, but still, I think they that other matches went a tad too long and they had to cut into this match or Rey Mysterio's ankle injury literally prevented him from being able to go, but that was the whole reason I said that even if Rey was injured or whatever, you still could have had your big eight-man ladder match. could have had R-Truth, Samoa Joe, Cian Almas, Mustafa Ali, Rey Mysterio, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Rusev, and you would have had a great ladder match for WrestleMania, but they said it was too big of a hassle or something, and I don't care what they say. That would have been a lot better for this, but Samoa Joe does retain, and I'm happy with that result. Next up, guys, we had the return of the big dog taking on Drew McIntyre, and this one didn't go the way that I would have liked it to go. I would have loved to seen like a Goldberg slash Brock Lesnar style matchup where it's just hard hitting finishers, just hard hitting all over the place. But what we got was pretty much just a Raw match. I felt like I was watching an edition of Monday Night Raw. It just what it didn't have the big match feel. And much like other matches in this show, it's like they they weren't creative with the endings of these matches. They're very anticlimactic. I felt like I don't know, like one Superman punch and one spear puts down Drew McIntyre. I think that they could have done a little bit more, or at least if they're going to do one Superman punch and one spear, then why not go through the announce table? Why not go through the barricade? Why not do some damage on the outside? Have a hard-hitting match. That way, when you lay down Drew, he can go down in like strong and defeat. And that's what I was wanting out of this match. I wanted Drew to lose because I knew he was going to lose, guys. He's dead. Roman Reigns isn't losing in this return match right now at WrestleMania. It's just not going to happen. So I thought that you know maybe he'll you know get he'll he'll look pretty good right here in defeat for Drew McIntyre. No, no, just one Superman punch, one spear. That that sucked, but. The Big Dog does win in a uh, not not nothing special here. I'm actually interested to see where Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns go from here because I'm pretty sure... I don't know if, you know, the Dean Ambrose stuff. Is Dean Ambrose going to continue? Is he really leaving WWE? Is Roman Reigns going to go to the Universal title picture? I don't think he should. Uh, Drew McIntyre, I thought this would have been a great way to have him look strong in defeat so he could be set up for something else. I just don't know where they go from here. It's going to be very interesting to see on Monday Night Raw tomorrow night what exactly we see. So that should be 
interesting for sure, but Roman Reigns does defeat Drew McIntyre. Next up, guys, we had Elias's segment. You guys know that we had to have something with Elias on this show. He is the music talent or whatever they said he was going to be. You know, we all knew that somebody was going to interrupt him. I thought Elias's segment was great. He was killing it with the crowd. He's super over. He's playing the white stripes. You know, he's he's singing along. The crowd's loving it, getting into it. And then out of nowhere, this Babe Ruth like promo comes over the big jumbotron and I, I was genuinely so super super like into this I was like who in the hell is this man and then my boy the goat the greatest to ever lace up a pair of wrestling boots John Cena shows up as not his his not his fruity pebble self but his original doctor of thugonomics gimmick the rapper comes down to a uh, dude I was marking out dude they played the old theme lights up doctor of thugonomics and I am just I'm marking out. I'm marking out in my living room watching this take place. He comes in the ring and he cuts one of his old school style promos. He's killing Elias with these with these fire bars, man. He just lays into him and he gives him an FU. He lays him out and then gives him a five knuckle shuffle. Hits him with the FU. He's even wearing the classic Reebok pumps. This is the John Cena that I fell in love with. This is the reason he is the GOAT. He is my favorite of all time. He got me totally invested, man. This is such a trip. He even mentioned turning heel. I mean, it was just amazing, man. This was amazing and this totally reinvested myself back into the show. It kind of gave the show a shock of life, if you will. I, I just love this so much, man. This was so great. I love this segment so very much and it was just beautiful to see what, what a beautiful turn of events here, man. I highly doubt this sticks. I, I really don't see him coming back and being a heel and being the old thugonomics gimmick. I think this was a one-off like he did that one time with The Rock or whatever. Um, but still great stuff, man. What what a great little segment. If, you know, if this takes up time at Mania, I'm fine with it. This is much better than one of those cringy, just terrible SNL segments or something like that, man. This was genuinely funny, genuine with the crowd. John just proves over and over again why he's so good and why he's the best. But, man, if you missed this part of the show, please go back and watch it. You will not miss it, especially if you lived through Cena's first run when he was the prototype to the Doctor of Thugonomics to now. If you witnessed that run, you really need to go back and watch this segment. Great thing, man. Just wonderful stuff, and I love this so much. It just made my heart so happy. Next up, guys, we had the No Holds Barred match between two of my favorites of all time, Triple H, the game, taking on the Animal Batista, and I thought that this match was good. I I, I see, like, a lot of hate online about this match. I, I really don't know what was wrong with it. I mean, did it go a little bit long? Was it a little bit of a slower pace? Yes, it was, but I thought that the spots they did were pretty good. You know, the announce table involved, the nose ring spot, the, the still step the the Ric Flair coming in the sledgehammer I thought it was I thought it was great storytelling and, and I wish the build would have been better between these two with you know their past and everything I felt like they told the wrong story here I think that Batista should have been talking about you know uh, how WWE didn't message him back and WWE ignored him and all this stuff I thought that would have been a much better story to tell but at the same time man I, I like this match I, I mean it is two of my favorites of all time however I just think that uh, they did a very good job on this and um, I don't know. I don't know what the hate is. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good stuff. I enjoyed it. And that's about all I can say is you had some good matches in here. Triple H ripping up the nose ring of Batista. They had tool a toolbox involved. Hard hitting matchup. I thought it was cool. I want to make Batista's attire because it's actually this exact uh, these exact trunks except for a different back logo. And I don't think that it would be that hard. I'd have to add his new belly button tattoo, uh, his other new tattoos on his shoulders and everything. But I think I could do it if I really wanted to. I don't know. I'm probably going to sleep on that one and just see. I may order a new Batista to do. He was rocking the LeBron soldiers in this matchup with the shin guards and everything. He was looking good, man. I, I, I enjoyed this. It sucks that, you know, Batista did lose. Triple H does win. I predicted Triple H to win, and, you know, I knew he wasn't going to retire here, so I think Batista will be done now. He'll ride off into the sunset. That will be his last WWE match, and it was a great career. I could be wrong about that. You know, in wrestling, you can never say never, or, you know, you're never done until you're done, but uh, I enjoyed this matchup. Good stuff. Triple H defeats the animal finally. With the help of the nature boy next up guys we had kurt angle's farewell match one of my favorite wrestlers of all time kurt angle taking on one of my least favorite wrestlers ever trash corbin as i like to call him and guys this is a truly special moment it's a bittersweet moment because i love kurt angle so much he's one of my favorite all-time wrestlers he was uh my first ever favorite wrestler because when i first started watching was uh, right around the time that he came into the company and uh, he was one of my first favorite wrestlers ever. Him, Chris Jericho, Stone Cold, 
and I loved him so much and I always have and it's so surreal that he is finally done but I think that it's for the best you know he really can't go anymore you guys saw in the matchup here with Trash Corbin and uh, it, it was for what it was it was fine you know we thought that John Cena would come out we thought that you know somebody would replace Baron Corbin but no you know they had their matchup and I want to give a huge shout out to Kurt Angle for putting Baron Corbin over here in his last matchup he could have easily said you know what no I'm going over this is my last match I want to win I want to hit this moonsault and I want to win and that's not what happened you know he wanted to go out on his back because he's that genuine of a person he's that you know nice as a guy and he knows that Baron Corbin unlike Angle is going to go into work tomorrow and have a character still on TV and he wanted to respect that in my personal opinion though he could have won this matchup let's be real he could have put Trash Corbin down Trash Corbin uh, didn't need this he did not need it he would have lost to Kurt Angle one of the goats of all time and you know uh, he's already beaten Kurt Angle before so I thought that he could have easily taken the L here but you know it is what it is whatever Kurt Angle wanted to do the job he did the job for him went out on his back like the old school classic rule is and it's just surreal man but I, I'm happy to see Kurt Angle I, I'm glad to have witnessed you know not only his debut but his his retirement match here and it's it's a surreal moment but uh, I love Kurt Angle to death and he deserves all the accolades in the world and I'll never forget the man but that is it for this matchup Trash Corbin does defeat Kurt Angle after he misses a moonsault not much to this match it was your typical little match uh, some back and forth here and there, but Trash Corbin does defeat Kurt Angle. Next up, guys, we have the Intercontinental Championship match between my boy, the Demon Finn Balor, taking on Bobby Trashley, guys. And I gotta say, Finn Balor's freaking entrance was fantastic. I loved every single second of it. I thought that uh, it looked incredible with that big screen. He came down like it from an, like like an angel, like angelic from the skies, like an angelic demon type thing coming down. The little tentacles on the, on the screen look great behind him. Epic stuff, man. The demon looked beautiful, and I totally regret saying I had to do a custom of this because it looks physically impossible to do. It looks like it's going to be one hellacious demon paint. I think that it's more complex than the one he rocked at SummerSlam. Like that back logo and those teeth down his ribs and everything, man. This is going to be my hardest custom to date. Absolutely. Not even close. It's definitely going to be a challenge for me, but I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fun. Demon look beautiful. You know, it is what it is. He is, in fact, your new Intercontinental Champion. Let's go ahead and get Trashley out of here. Not going to lie, though. I thought the contacts looked great on Trashley. I thought Trashley looked pretty good the contacts, um, but he, he was no match for the demon. You can't come, you know, mocking the demon like that with the contacts and think you're going to walk out with your Intercontinental title. So my man Finn Balor now is a two-time Intercontinental Champion, and hopefully this gives him a lengthy run, man. Let him run out into the summer with this thing, have the demon defending the IC title, looking great with the title. I think that would be fantastic, man. Let this man run with it. Uh, let him win the Money in the Bank, too, while you're at it. Let him carry the briefcase in the Intercontinental title at once, win the Money in the Bank briefcase, and that will be all right with me. But the demon look fantastic guys he wins new intercontinental champion and just a yeah, just a beautiful sight and for our main event ladies and gentlemen we had our triple threat main event first ever women's main event for wrestlemania here at wrestlemania 35 winner take all raw women's championship smackdown live women's championship ronda rousey becky lynch my girl and Charlotte Flair all competing for the winner take all here guys and I thought that this match delivered there were some spots obviously where it wasn't the cleanest there were some botchy moments there were some you know what's what whatsoever's you know uh, the table in the corner spot for one definitely not the cleanest uh, I don't think they got enough momentum there and then the finish the finish was really anticlimactic I feel like so many matches on this card had anticlimactic finishes especially this one um, it's not, it sort of just came out of nowhere you know uh, Ronda Rousey's going for the Piper pit and instead of landing it she gets rolled up from behind by Becky I thought they were going to do like a swerve you know there was rumors going around about a swerve I thought it was going to be uh, Vince McMahon come out or somebody come out and be like no 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 restart the match I thought that was going to happen and Charlotte or Ronda was going to win but thank god that didn't happen we finally we actually got it guys we got Seth Kofi and Becky Lynch all three winning that that is very surprising you would think that uh, you know WWE usually gives us the big FU they usually give us the big middle finger here I did enjoy this matchup though I thought that the entrances were awesome I thought that the women looked great I thought that overall just uh, a really good matchup 
Um, could it have been better? I'm sure, but I still liked it. I like the aggressiveness. I like the the fast paced action that we got between all three women. I love that. Uh, I love that Becky Lynch actually pinned Ronda Rousey. I thought that was great as well. Just some really good stuff in this main event. I thought the women delivered here. And outside of the finish and maybe a little bit of the table, but it wasn't a complete botch by the table. But um, I still I still enjoyed this this match, and I still thought that they delivered in the main event. And the women looked great. Becky Lynch looked great, and. I can't wait to see where they go from here, but uh, congratulations to the women on this main event. I thought they did great, and um, of course, every every match has its flaws, but this one, this one was a good one. And now, my girl Becky Lynch is your undisputed Raw and SmackDown Live Women's Champion, and I am wondering where we go from here, guys. Where are we going to go from here? Are we going to unify the women's divisions? That's exactly what should happen. They should totally unify the women's divisions, guys. We should have one women's champion make a new championship belt, and we should unify these divisions, and we should have all the women like go and cross-brand, just like the tag team titles. I think they should do the same thing here. Maybe if you go cross-brand, you could introduce a mid-card title as well. That way, you could introduce, you know, all your women could get on the show. You could have more feuds and stuff like that, but super congratulations to Becky Lynch. She deserved it. I can't believe WWE actually gave us all three women, or all three faces winning here. Seth Rollins, Kofi Kingston, and Becky Lynch. How incredible is that? That's absolutely mind-blowing here, but uh, my girl Becky Lynch does it, man. She's the undisputed women's champion. To be honest with you, this WrestleMania wasn't like the biggest deal. I feel like, uh, I don't know, like it was a it was a solid show. It's just nothing really stands out. I, again, I feel like a lot of stuff was anticlimactic about this. Kofi Kingston winning is obviously the biggest story. Seth Rollins winning and I mean, I, yes, we got our three big champions, but I, I'm talking about the matches itself. The matches themselves don't really stand out apart from the crowd. I would think that Kofi and Daniel is probably the match of the night in my opinion. I also enjoyed Triple H and Batista a lot more than I should. Well, I shouldn't say that, but I still, I, I, I like it a lot more than other people. I thought AJ Styles and Randy Orton again should have went another 10 minutes, and there was a lot of other things that uh, made this show solid, but nothing. The John Cena part, the John Cena part was probably one of my favorite parts of the entire show, not gonna lie to you. That, I was marking out for sure. But yeah, guys, I mean, overall successful many, I guess. Like I said, nothing ridiculously over-the-top crazy happened outside of the championships change hands but that is your full WrestleMania 35 full show review and results for you guys. I would love to know your comments down below. I can't wait for Monday Night Raw to see where we go from here. Are we going to do a draft? Are we going to have Bray Wyatt return? Are we going to have Sami Zayn return? We didn't have a single segment of Undertaker, Kevin Owens, or Dean Ambrose. Is Dean Ambrose really gone? Where does Kevin Owens go from here? This man literally didn't even show up on the show. I was expecting a Kevin Owens moment. No Kevin Owens moments. Um, will John Cena show up at Raw? Will John Seen us show up at SmackDown. I mean, there's a lot of where does Batista go? I mean, there there's a lot of things coming out of this. What are we gonna see from Seth? Who will become the number one contender? Is Brock getting a rematch? Are we gonna I mean there is literally a lot of questions coming out of this mania, which is important because you want coming out of mania, you want to have questions. You want to have, you know, some answers that you want to be heard. And hopefully after this mania, Raw can pick up its bullshit and SmackDown Live can follow. SmackDown Live's obviously way better than Raw, but I still think that uh, both shows could do a lot better here going into the summer. You know, 2016 was a lot better than 2017 and a hell of a lot better than 2018, guys. 2018 was probably the worst creative year I've ever seen on Monday Night Raw. And hopefully after this mania we can continue. But I enjoyed the show overall. I love wrestling. I love WWE. I love that a lot of my favorite wrestlers became champions tonight and won their matches and stuff. So it's all exciting for me. I can't wait to uh, get started on these customs and, you know, just uh, enjoy Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live. So it's basically like a 3-4 if you count, if you include NXT. It's going to be a four-night event. You got NXT, then you got WWE WrestleMania, and then you have Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live. So I can't wait to see the call-ups, the returns, the debuts, whatever the case. But that's that pretty much does it for this video of WrestleMania 35, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, comment down below. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.